Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the starting 11. Southampton versus Everton. Tough, tough game. Tough game. Every away game is a tough game, isn't it? When you've got our kind of away record. But uh, we should be confident, I think. Should be confident. Certainly after beating Ipswich uh, away last time out. So here we go. In goal, Jordan Pickford. Um, up, up against Ramsdale at the other end of the pitch. Obviously, someone who was vying for his England spot. Well, Jordan has got an opportunity to show everyone that he's the best keeper. But hopefully, he's not too busy. Hopefully, he isn't busy at all and has a quiet day. But uh, we'll see. Uh, at right back, I'm going with Ashley Young. I think he's done. I think he's done well in the last few weeks, and it's hard to gauge where the other right backs are because they haven't had any time on the pitch. Um, and Patterson would be in out for so long. Is this the right time to put him back in the side with the team eking out results, let's say? Not really playing with any kind of particular style. Not that we, we do anyway, but I'm not sure it's time to really tinker with that at the moment. So I'm going to continue with Ashley Young. Uh, and on the other side, Vitaly Michalenko, because there are no left-backs at our football club. I didn't think he had a particularly good game last week. It'd be a different kind of different kind of approach this week. Last week it was pace. This week it'll be um probably the skill of dibbling for Southampton, which gives it a different kind of different kind of approach. Someone with that sort of Jack Grealish kind of uh skill set. Jink and winger. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on with that. At uh, centre back. James Tarkowski and Jared Brandwaite. For me, I think Jared Brandwaite should have played last week. I don't go in for any of this nonsense, personally, of uh, keeping people in the team because they've had a good game when there's a player sitting on the bench who's a much better player than them and helps you play better. Jared Brandwaite is uh, better in the air. He's better with his feet. He's got more pace, so he can get. He can. He allows you to play up the pitch a little bit. He's got that recovery pace. Um, uh, you know, to me, it's just a case of. I understand when two players are similar and one's got the shirt, one's trying to get the shirt. I fully get that, but I think when one is much better than the other one, I think you have to put any kind of feelings to the side that you might have. Not that I've got any, but. For the manager, I think he has to be a lot more professional. And for me, that's where Jared Brantway comes back into the side. In midfield, uh, I'm going to obviously give my opinions based on what I think the injury situation will be. Uh, the two in the midfield is Adisagana Gay and Mangala for me because I thought, again, I think Adisagana Gay, now that he's back and now that he's into the rhythm of things, is number one on the on the on the team sheet for me. There's no James Garner, there's no Tino de Boone available, so that limits the options to basically three in midfield at the moment that can play. So Jessica Garner Gay has to be the first on the team sheet. And next to him, I'm going to go for Mangala because I I thought the Corey last week was I mean for their goal, you know, when you watch it back and stuff, he should do better. In genuinely, I think I can understand why he's been playing because he does get around the midfield and. It, you know, set pieces at either, either end of the pitch as well. But I just think with Mangala, he, we have a little bit more control of the ball. And you go back to the Leicester game, you know, when we were in, when we were comfortable in that game, when we won the up, I thought he was really good on that day. He's gone out the team. I don't really understand why he went out the team, but he went out the team and Decore did all right. Um, and again, there's not loads between them, but I just, I just think for this game, I think Mangala, just for... Just because I don't think we're gonna have loads of the ball in this game, and I think it's when I think it's important that when we have it, we keep it. Um, and I think he's the right player for that. So I'd have him back ahead of those two, Dwight McNeil. Now Dwight McNeil's been injured this week, but I do think he'll be available. I think what's being said about you know they've said that he's he's you know he's sort of touch and go and stuff. But I I think they'll I think they'll make sure. Or they have probably been making sure that he's available by not putting him in training. Rather than maybe missing training, it's a case of being at the, at precautionary. Because he is so important, in terms, certainly from set pieces. 
So he, he sort of, you know, they'll do be doing everything to make sure if he plays. I think if he doesn't play, I think the core will be playing there. Although I'd want Njai and uh, Lindstrom and Harrison on the left, but I don't think that's going to happen. But if he doesn't play, I think it'll be the core playing where he plays. Um, on the right hand side, Jack Harrison. Although I did think he, I did think he was terrible last week. I just don't think Lindstrom's done anywhere near enough to take that place yet. And I think in an away game where you've got to know what you're doing defensively, I'm not 100% sure Lindstrom understands that. He came on for Harrison and he didn't do much and he hasn't really done much. Maybe maybe there is a, maybe he is one of those players where you go, he needs three or four, five games in the side, you know, play playing week in, week out. Um, it just doesn't feel at the moment like, can we do that? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to go for Harrison. And on the left-hand side, of course, in Jai, who had a slightly quieter game last week, but obviously we saw him in the last away game and he was he was uh, very instrumental in Everton getting the three points that game. And up front, Dominic Carvalhoen. Um, of course, people, I've seen loads of people saying Bettle should, should, Bettle should start now that he scored, but... I don't think Bettle's at that level yet. I think he has moments in games, and I think we have to find a way to get him off the bench more often, and we have to find a way to get him playing up front with Dominic Carvalho more often as well, because I think that's a threat. They can be a handful. But at the moment, I just don't think... Certainly in a game where you're not going to have a lot of the ball either. And don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that Southampton are going to like dominate us, but they're going to dominate the ball. I mean, at times last week at the Etihad, they had more possession than Manchester City. They do dominate the ball. It's what they do with it. And it's important that we have someone up front who can get hold of it and take us into the into the final third and have some control. I think with Beto, you give up control because every pass into him is 50-50, whether he's going to keep it or or, or lose it. So it's still Dominic Carvalhoen for me, but hopefully, no matter what the what the score is, we get Beto gets an opportunity to come on and show what he's all about. But whilst keep keeping that team structure. So let me know your thoughts in the comments anyway. That's my team to face Southampton on Saturday. Let me know. Make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the match preview with Baz and myself. If you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description. The QR code's come on the screen now. See you later.